This morning, we're looking at the evolving landscape of cannabis in the U.S. Ohio just became the 24th state, along with Washington, D.C., to allow legal recreational use of marijuana. But the products available vary tremendously from state to state. CBS News con medical contributor Dr. Celine Gounder shows us what we can learn from states with strict health and safety requirements. On this farm in upstate New York, Melanie Dobson and her family closely watch their prize crop. Here you see the fan leaves, here are the sugar leaves, and this is the flower. The high value area are the resinous glands that produce the oils, CBD, THC, and the terpenes, which give the flower its scent. Under strict sanitary conditions, Dobson and her family grow cannabis, which was until two years ago illegal in New York State. What is it that you're tagging here? This allows us when we harvest to know exactly which set of plants are in the batch that we've harvested. Dobson and her sister Freya track the cannabis from the greenhouse and the fields to the drying room, to the rolling, and packaging room. Two years ago, the sisters were growing cannabis out west when their brother offered them a new opportunity back home. Ben called us and he said, why don't you come back east and, and work, work with me? Ben Dobson was in upstate New York, marrying organic farming with hemp production. I needed help building a company and a brand. I was calling since from April when we got the license. Like, when are you gonna come back? Cannabis farming is in the Dobson family's blood. Their father, Ted, grew hemp and cannabis while the siblings were growing up, before there were any legal growers. What makes the cannabis from licensed, regulated growers like Hudson Cannabis different from what you get from illegal growers in shops is all the measures taken to standardize potency and minimize contaminants. They're looking at different bacteria and um, fungi. They're also looking at other toxins, including pesticides and um, heavy metals. A 2022 study found that 40% of products sold by illegal cannabis shops in New York City contain toxic contaminants, including bacteria, fungus, heavy metals, pesticides, and cancer-causing toxins. Researchers also found that many of the products tested did not contain the amount of THC advertised on the label. How you doing? Good, how are you? But legal growers like Hudson Cannabis are required to test samples at third-party labs. New York has the strictest requirements of any state. Once cannabis products clear testing, they're distributed to licensed dispensaries across the state. Arena Hankin Biggers is the president of a Manhattan dispensary called Union Square Travel Agency. The product that you sell is not just tested for contaminants, it's also tested for potency. Why does that matter? Because you don't want a bad experience, right? You're going to really have a negative reaction in many cases, increased paranoia, um, the effects of the high will last a lot longer. The potency of cannabis products can range widely and may not be accurately labeled at illegal shops, no matter how fancy the packaging. This means that consumers can't safely regulate the dose they're taking. How is a consumer supposed to know if a dispensary is a licensed legal one or not? They're a blue sticker with a square QR code, and you can scan it and ensure that space is a licensed space. Why do you specifically choose to go to a licensed dispensary rather than any place else? Uh, quality control. I'm one of the baby boomers who grew up partaking in, in cannabis when it was not legal. But now that I'm older, I want to go to a place that believes in science and where it's reliable. But legal cannabis often costs more because of licensing fees, taxes, and the cost of testing. One batch of cannabis for us uh, costs about $4,500 in testing. There's a really slim margin to capture. Uh, in a very competitive landscape. Right. And the illicit market doesn't have to pay those licensing fees or the taxes or for testing. Yeah. Mm -mm. And they don't pay the IRS. And ultimately not. it hurts the customer who doesn't necessarily know better. Illegal shops can outnumber legal dispensaries by a lot. So for instance, here in New York City, there are 13 legal licensed dispensaries and an estimated 2,000 plus illegal shops. In some states, farmers can also sell directly to consumers, but it's also important to note 
The brain continues to develop until you're in your mid to late 20s, which is one reason why the minimum age to purchase cannabis is 21 in places where it is legal. First of all, Celine, I didn't. I had no idea about the QR code. There's mm. so many shops here. Thought they were all legal shops, but you mentioned that age of 21. So what about people of legal age? What do we know about the health risks of cannabis? Well, there's still a lot we don't know because the DEA classifies cannabis as a Schedule One drug, so just like heroin, which means yeah. it's really hard as a researcher to study these drugs. But there are a few things we do know. So smoking anything, any kind of smoke, if you inhale it, is going to cause or worsen lung or heart disease. Uh, we know that it has um, the risk of causing anxiety or psychotic symptoms. If you're using, especially if you're using in very high quantities, it can be addictive. And finally, you should never be smoking cannabis or really using any mind altering substance when you're gonna be driving. Fascinating, important. Thank you for it, Celine.